What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. This is the beginner's guide to the T-Mobile Revel V Plus 5G. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some different tips and tricks for this phone to help you get more familiar with the device. Before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. But with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So the first thing I want to show you is how to change the wallpaper. This is really simple. All you got to do is go to settings, display, wallpaper, and here you can choose between things you have on the device and your photo gallery. Now there's also a faster way to do this, and this method actually gives you access to other settings as well. All you got to do is put one finger on the display like this, and we get this menu right here. You can go to your home settings, you can change some widgets, and of course, you can change the wallpapers. You can find most of these settings through the normal settings menu, but having them all in one place makes things just that much easier. The next thing I want to show you is the system navigation. Right now, we got the three buttons down here, the back button, the home button, and of course, the recent apps button, but we can change this to another feature called gesture navigation that gets rid of the buttons and gives it a cleaner look. So I'm gonna show you how we get there. We're gonna go to our settings menu, system, gestures, and system navigation right here. So as you can see, by default, this phone is set to three button navigation, but we can go to gesture navigation instead and this is going to replace the buttons with this bar right here. Now to go to your home screen, all you need to do is swipe up like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger up from the bottom. And to go back, slide your finger from one side of the screen to the other. Now this can be from left to right or right to left. It doesn't really matter which direction you slide your finger as long as it goes from one side of the screen to the other. Now, I personally wish there was a forward button as well. So for example, sliding left to right would go back and right to left would go forward. But unfortunately, we don't currently have that option. The next thing I want to show you is how to get the dark theme. In case you don't know, the dark theme is a really cool setting that basically changes all the light colors on your theme into dark colors. So let me show you what that looks like. We're going to go to our settings menu, display, and toggle on dark theme right here. So as you can see, we are now in dark theme. Light colors have all become dark colors and it looks kind of cool. Another cool thing about this feature is that you can actually schedule it. So if we select this, you're gonna be able to schedule it to turn on from sunset to sunrise, or you can change it to a custom time as well. The next thing I wanna show you is how you can change your lock screen. In case you don't know, this is what your lock screen is. It's right here where it asks you to enter your pin. You can actually change this to a password or a pattern or take it off altogether. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. We're going to go to our settings menu once again. Go to security and go to screen lock. It's going to ask you to enter your current pin. And now you can choose between nothing, swipe, which is basically the same as nothing, pattern, pin, or if you want to get real crazy with the security, you can choose password, which is basically a more complex version of the pin. Now you might be wondering, how do you actually activate the fingerprint scanner? So to do that, we're going to go back to the security menu and see where it says fingerprint. All you need to do is go to this menu and follow the on-screen instructions to set up a fingerprint and you'll be good to go. In addition to this, there's also face unlock, and you can actually use both the fingerprint scanner and the face unlock at the same time, which I think is really cool. The next thing I'm going to show you is the sound menu. There are a few important settings in this menu to be aware of, so we're going to go to sound, and the first thing we see is the media volume, and that's basically if you're watching a movie, maybe listening to music or something like that, this controls the volume of those types of things. There's the call volume, and don't be mistaken, this is not the ringtone. This is the volume of the earpiece when you're talking to someone on the phone, so keep that in mind. And then of course, the ring and notification volume, that's for pretty much general notifications, calls, text messages, all that sort of thing. And as you can see, it's on vibrate because I just don't like sounds in general. I have yet to hear a ringtone or alert tone that I actually like. They're all annoying to me, but if you do like them, you can definitely turn this up. Alarm volume, of course, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then vibrate for calls. Right now it's set to never vibrate, which I don't know why it is. I'm going to change that to vibrate. I personally always want the phone to vibrate when I get a call. And even if you have the ringtone on, 
There might be situations where you can't hear it and then you'll miss the call. So I do recommend using Vibrate for this reason. If you're ever in a situation where you just want to silence your phone for a little while, you can always turn on Do Not Disturb. And then there are a couple other things, like for example, the ringtones, and then default notification sounds, all kinds of different settings you can change. So definitely take a look at this menu so you can really personalize it and make it your own. Similar to sounds, the next thing we're going to go over is notifications. This time we're going to go to apps and notifications and go to notifications. And now there are a few things to be aware of. First of all, if you get notifications from apps that you don't want, you're going to go to this section and it's going to show you all the notifications you received in the last seven days. So for example, this app right here has been super annoying, showing me all kinds of notifications. I don't know why I didn't turn it off sooner, but I'm going to go ahead and toggle this off. And now I'm not going to be constantly getting notifications from it anymore. I don't even know what this does, honestly, so I'm gonna turn this off too. And the list really goes on. I do recommend doing this as soon as you get your phone, just so you can get it out of the way. Because if you have a bunch of apps sending you random notifications that aren't important, it really does add up and it gets real annoying real fast. The other thing to take note of is the bubbles. This is really interesting. Basically, if you have a conversation with someone over text or over Facebook Messenger, I have seen it work on that too. It's gonna show up as a little bubble on your screen so you don't actually have to be in the messaging app itself in order to get the notification and see the conversation. I think this is really cool and I have it on, but it isn't for everybody, so definitely try it out and see if you like it yourself. The other thing in the notification section to be aware of is the sensitive notifications. If you don't want other people to potentially glance at your phone and see a notification with sensitive information, you can just toggle this off and then it won't show sensitive content when your phone is locked. The next thing I'm gonna show you is something I'm sure everybody's wanting to know and that is how to take a screenshot. So this is really easy. What you're gonna do is press the power key and the volume down key if you can see it, it kind of blends in there. But you're gonna press these two buttons and hold them at the same time. And don't forget, I can't stress this enough, hold the buttons down, don't just press them because this is what happens when you just press it. It's not gonna do anything. You have to hold it until the screen flashes and then it's gonna take a screenshot. This little editing thing comes up, usually it doesn't last long, it's like a second and then it disappears right when you're about to press it. There we go, just went away. But if you get to that little toolbar before it disappears, you can share it immediately or edit the screenshot as well. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to change the screen timeout time. Have you ever been in a situation where your phone falls asleep on you when you're reading something or the opposite? Maybe you forget to lock your phone and it stays on wasting unnecessary battery, unnecessarily wasting battery. Well, I'm gonna show you how to avoid both of these situations. So we're gonna go to settings, display, advanced, and screen timeout right here. As you can see, I have mine to 30 minutes. You can also set it at never if you wanna go real hardcore with it. I don't recommend this because it's just gonna drain your battery unless you're watching a movie or something and don't wanna keep tapping your screen. That's understandable, but this is really long and it's gonna drain your battery. So just keep that in mind. You can also have it as short as 15 seconds. And that is a real short amount of time, so be sure you don't have it set to that when you're doing something like reading or watching a video. But I do suggest playing around with this yourself because it is gonna be different for everyone. It really just depends on how you use your phone. The last thing I'm gonna show you is the auto-rotate screen feature. That's basically when you turn your phone sideways and it rotates everything to landscape mode. It's a cool feature. I personally don't like it just because it sometimes just triggers randomly for no reason. But in certain situations, maybe you're reading something or if you wanna use the landscape keyboard, it can be pretty useful. So let's take a look at two ways you can do it. We're gonna go with the hard way first and that is going to settings, display, advanced, and toggling on auto rotate screen right here. And now when you turn your phone sideways, it's gonna auto rotate the screen into landscape mode. And then when you turn it again, it's gonna go back. Now the other way you can toggle this on and off is simply by opening your quick menu and hitting this icon right here. When it's highlighted in blue, that means it's on. And when it's not, that means it's off. So now if we go back and try to rotate the screen again, it doesn't work. But let's turn that right back on and it's back. 
But that was my beginner's guide to the T-Mobile Revel V Plus 5G. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you found these tips and tricks useful as well. If you want to learn more about the phone, be sure to watch my full review of the device on the channel. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.